Salute omnes. This is Abbey Latin Liber Primus, Chapter 6. This is Exercise D of Chapter 6, Parsing Latin to English. Quick review of parsing. Parsing is the exercise or act of giving the parts of each word in a sentence. So, how do we read? We start at the left, the first word, and parse or read each word as one encounters them moving towards the right. By parse, I mean give the parts. That means that when you encounter a Latin noun, you are to give that noun's dictionary entry, the case of that noun in the sentence, the number of that noun in the sentence, and from the case, we derive the noun's reason. And then once we do that, we can come up with a translation into English. When parsing a Latin verb, you are to give the dictionary entry of that verb, so the principal parts, and then the person, the number, and the tense of the verb in the sentence. Number one, sententia una, una. Multi pueri boni dona pocra et magna dabant feminis. Multi pueri boni dona pocra et magna dabant feminis. So we start over here on the left, reading each word one at a time towards the right. Starting with the first word, we parse it. Multi, it's an adjective from multis a o, meaning much, plural, many. The form multi with the i, that could be genitive singular, masculine or neuter, or nominative plural, masculine. And we don't know which one yet. Let's we'll keep going. So the next word, pueri, from puer, pueri, masculine, that's the dictionary entry, it means boy. And it could either be the genitive singular. If so, it's showing possession, meaning the boys or of the boy, or it could show the nominative plural, in which case it'll probably show the subject, could show the predicate nominative, probably the subject. I also note that these forms could be the same. So multi could agree with pueri, so the adjective could modify this noun. Boni, from bonus a o, meaning good. It also could be genitive singular, masculine or neuter, or nominative plural, masculine. So we're going to have to keep a couple of our options open. Dona, this is from donum e neuter, meaning gift. It could either be the nominative plural, because it's a neuter noun, um e o um o, a or is a is. So it could either be the nominative plural, which case it could either be the subject or the predicate nominative, or it could be the accusative plural, in which case it would be the direct object. So many options. Adjective, poker, pokra, pokrum, we have pokra, beautiful, noble, or fine. It could be, likewise, lots of things. Nominative singular feminine, nominative plural neuter, or accusative plural neuter. It could agree with dona. It could modify the noun dona. Et, et is a conjunction meaning and. Magna, so we're linking pokra et magna, this adjective and this adjective. They don't have to be the same, but yeah, they could be. Magnus a um, large, great, or big. It could also be nominative singular feminine, nominative plural neuter, or accusative plural neuter. So we're going to have to make some choices when we get to the end. Dabant, dabant from do, dare, dedi, datas, meaning to give. So dabant, this is third and plural and imperfect. So some plural things we're giving. Now, we can stop right here, pause. Would the gifts, if they were the subject, and they could be, the beautiful and big gifts, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that these adjectives modify this noun, would these gifts be giving something? And if so, even if they could, the gifts could be doing the action of the verb, the inanimate object could be doing the action, even so, they would have to be doing this in this action to an accusative direct object. Well, multi pueri boni, not an accusative at all. Feminis, from femina I, feminine woman, dated plural, indirect object. Ablative, it's not ablative. It's not going to be ablative this time. So, dated plural. Well, this has to be the accusative direct object of this verb and the subject of this verb. The subject nominative plural multi pueri boni. Many good boys. 
Notice that an adjective of quantity precedes the noun, and the adjective of quality uh, goes after the noun. So, multi pueri boni. Then we have dona pulcra et magna. Notice here we have um, the two adjectives modifying this noun separated by a conjunction, whereas in English we could say big, beautiful gifts. Latin doesn't like to do that so much. So we could put magna dona pulcra, uh, but Latin will also do this, dona pulcra et magna. Dabant were giving, they were giving, so the many good boys were giving. Dona pulcra et magna, big, beautiful gifts. And then feminis dative, the reason for dative is indirect object. Could also be possession, but that's usually used with uh, the verb sum esse fui futuris, which we don't have here. So indirect object to the women. The indirect object dative receives the direct object. The women are getting the big beautiful gifts. All right, optime. Secunda, sententia secunda. Filiis meis filiabusque multa de geografia narabo. So filiis, filiis. Could either be, uh, well, concern filios e masculine, meaning son, could either be dative or ablative plural. It's not ablative. It's going to be dative. Uh, dative, uh, it could be ablative if it had a preposition in front of it, but it does not. So it's going to be the dative, the indirect object. So to some sort of sons, plural sons. Meis, from meos a o, my, mine. And it's a possessive adjective. So it's an adjective, it modifies a noun like Filiis, they have the same gender number in case. Dative, plural, masculine, indirect object. To my sons. Filiabusque, filiabusque. Remember, que means and. It's a postpositive, meaning placed afterwards. Enclitic, a leaning word, meaning that it can't survive on its own, it has to lean on the end of another word. So it means and. We translate it before the word to which it is attached. So the and, the que, goes here when we translate. To my sons and filiabus, filiabus, dative or ablative plural. Remember, it has an irregular form because otherwise it would have the same form as filiis, filia, I, feminine, daughter. So this is the dative, filiabus. Otherwise, uh, it, it is an indirect object as well. Filiis meis filiabusque, to my sons and daughters. Multa, multa, uh, from multus a om. It could be a nominative singular feminine. It could be nominative or accusative plural neuter. We're going to have to hang out and see. De, de, this is a preposition meaning down from, showing separation. Or it could also mean about or concerning. Uh, and Ancient uh, works in Latin were often titled with de, like de bello gallico, about concerning the ablative Gallic war. De amicitia, concerning friendship, which was an essay about friendship written by Marcus Tullius Cicero. Cicero. So this is de geografia. Uh, geografia, so geography, geografia I feminine. Uh, this is the ablative singular feminine, so it goes with uh, the preposition de, about or concerning geography. And then we have narabo, narabo, from naro, narare, narawi, naratus, meaning to tell, like a narrator tells the story. Uh, narabo is first person singular future tense, I will tell or I shall tell. So naro will often take an accusative direct object, like multa, accusative plural neuter, many things. In English, we could just say much, but we could also say many things. I shall tell. I will tell multa, many things. And you tell an accusative direct object to a dative, to a dative indirect object. Um, if I tell you something, I tell to you something, I tell something to you. The multa is the something, it's many things. I will tell many things to my sons and daughters. De geografia, it's many things about geography. I will tell many things about geography to my sons and daughters. Or you could say, I will tell much about geography 
to my sons and daughters. Tertia, sententia tertia, deorum regna erant sacra, deorum regna erant sacra. So we have the deorum from Deus e masculine God. So deorum, this is the genitive plural masculine showing possession, the gods of the gods. Regna, from regnum e neuter, kingdom, kingship, throne, crown. Uh, that which denotes a rex, a king, a regnum, so a kingdom. Uh, this is going to either be the nominative or accusative plural neuter, regna, because it's neuter endings, um, e, o, um, o, a, orum, is, a, is. So it's either going to be the subject in the nominative or the direct object in the accusative case. Errant, errant. Well, that answers that question. If we have this linking verb, sum esse fui futurus, then we cannot have an accusative direct object. We cannot have an accusative direct object if we have a form of sum, which we have here. Our irregular friend, sum esse fui futurus, to be. So errant, errant. So unt, third person plural, they. And then era, this is the stem for the imperfect. Eram, eras, erat, eramos, eratis, erat. So, they were. Something were. What were? Well, regna, we pretty much said that that can't be accusative. It's going to be nominative, the subject. So, the kingdoms of the gods, the gods' kingdoms were, erat, were, used to be, sacra, sacra. So, we have uh, sacer, sacra, sacrum, holy sacred. It can also mean accursed. The root meaning of saker is that which is set apart by the gods, that which is put aside, set off from everything else by the divine. And that could either be a good thing or that could be a bad thing. That could be a good thing, like being a saint, although some people might wonder about uh, the happiness of your life if you are a saint. And it could be a, a bad thing. You could be something that is accursed, cursed by the gods, cursed by the divine. So context will usually reveal uh, which one we're talking about, either holy, sacred, or cursed, accursed. So the regna, the kingdoms of the gods, were holy, were sacred, because they're the gods. Sacra, from sacer, sacra, sacrum, the stem you get from chopping off the a and you get sacer. This is the nominative plural neuter form to agree with regna. Remember, sum, erant, this acts as a linking verb, like an equal sign. We are linking the noun regna, the subject, with its predicate nominative, sacra, which is an adjective. So, the kingdoms were sacred. The kingdoms of the gods were sacred. The gods' kingdoms were sacred. Quarta, sententia quarta. Liberos ex agricolarum agris, vocabitis in villas vestras. So liberos, liberos. Uh, this is from the adjective liber, libera, liberum, meaning free. And you get the stem from chopping off the a ah or the um, so liber is the stem. And then first and second declension endings are tacked on to that stem. So os, second declension, masculine, uh, accusative. So probably is going to be the direct object. There is not a preposition in front of this word. So the accusative, plural, masculine, direct object, uh, free men. Or this word can also mean children. The little free people in a household, a household composed of a pater, a father, a mater, a mother, the servi, the slaves, and then the not slaves, the liberi, those would be the children. When they run in packs, they're liberi. When they're individualized, they're usually denoted puer and puella based on their sex. So liberi, or a masculine plural, is a substantive noun. It comes from the adjective liber, so children. Or you could say free people. So the context of the sentence will uh, will tell us. X, a, X plus the ablative will show separation, movement away from or out of. So we're looking for an ablative of separation. 
agricolarum, from agricola i, masculine farmer. So this is not the appellative, but this is a genitive. So this is probably going to be a genitive, a genitive of possession modifying the next word. And hopefully the next word is ablative and goes with the preposition. So genitive, possession, uh, plural, the farmers, of the farmers. Then we have agris. Oh, thank goodness. We have agar, agri, masculine, field, farmland. It could be dative plural or ablative plural. Ablative plural with the preposition out of the fields of the farmers. Out of the farmers' fields. Plural fields. Wokabitis. Wokabitis. So, woko, wokare, wokawi, wokatus, to call. We have tis, tis, second person plural. Bi, future. And then the verb woka wokare. Woka is the stem. So ye will call. Y'all shall call. Ye will call the accusative direct object children out of the fields of the farmers. It could also be you will call the free men out of the fields of the farmers. Context in a greater, broader sense, like more sentences as part of a narrative, would tell us uh, which one, children or free men. In we las vuestras. In plus the accusative will show motion towards, into or onto. In plus the ablative will show location, in or on. We las from we la i, feminine farmhouse. So we las accusative, plural, feminine. If it's accusative, this is showing motion into the farmhouses, plural farmhouses, and they are. Wester, Westra, Westrum, belonging to you, plural. They are yours, your plural. Also accusative, also plural, also feminine to agree with we loss. So this is also accusative, plural, feminine, motion towards into your farmhouses. Ye, y'all will call the children out of the fields of the farmers into your farmhouses. Quinta, sententia quinta. Eret frumentum in multis agris post silvam. So eret, eret frumentum. We have eret. This is a form of sum as the first word in the sentence. So existential sum. So uh, this is third person singular future. There will be. <coughs> there will be something. There will be a nominative subject coming up that will exist, that will be. Frumentum, frumentum e neuter grain. So nominative, a nominative subject, maybe, or it could be accusative, direct object. But if we have a form of sum, that takes the accusative uh, case out of the running because you can't have an accusative direct object if you have a form of sum. Because linking verbs don't work with the accusative, they work with the nominative, subject and predicate nominative. So here we have a nominative subject. There will be grain. There will be grain. Grain will be. Grain will exist. There will be grain in. In plus the accusative will show motion towards. In plus the ablative will show location. So in multis, from multus a um, much, plural, many. This is either dative or, uh, dative or ablative plural. It could be masculine, it could be feminine, it could be neuter. We're going to need a noun to tell us more about this in multis. In multis agris, in multis agris, from agar agri, masculine, field or farmland. So dative or ablative plural, I'm going to go with the ablative within, showing location. So multis is masculine, to agree with the masculine agar, in multis agris, in many fields, in many fields. There will be grain, where? In many fields. Post silvan, post silvan. The preposition post takes the accusative case. The accusative is silvan. Accusative singular feminine of silva i feminine forest or woods. Uh, post, it can mean behind, it can mean after, uh, in space or time. So this is probably going to be behind the space, woods, it's a location. So in many fields behind the forest, there will be grain. There will be grain in many fields behind the forest. Optime, sexta, sententia sexta. 
contra multos in Italia Galli inimici pugnant, sed Gallos apugnabimus. So we have contra, contra, uh, takes the accusative case, it's a preposition mean against. So against the multos, multos, from multos a um, much plural uh, many. Either, uh, this going, well, this is going to be the accusative plural masculine. So against, in opposition, contrary, it's also a cool video game, against many, uh, and it's many men. We could just say many, like against many, or we could say against many men. In, in plus the ablative shows location. If this were accusative, it would show motion towards into, but here it's location in. We are in Italia, I feminine, Italy, ablative singular feminine. Against many people or many men in Italy, Galli inimici pugnant, the Galli. From Gallus a um, a Gaul or Gallic, something that is Gaulish. So from there we can get substantive nouns Gallus e masculine, a Gallic man, a Gaul, or a Galla i feminine, a Gallic woman, a Gaul. So this is the substantive uh, nominative plural uh, masculine version. So Gall Gallus e masculine, the Galli, the Gauls. So against many people in Italy, the Gauls, inimici. This is another substantive, or actually this is an adjective. Uh, inimicus a um. Uh, we do get substantives from this, the same way that we get friend, amicus, from the adjective amicus a um, friendly. So this is uh, inimicus, your in amicus. You can see in tacked onto amicus with the a changing to an i. So inimici, you're not friends your rivals, your people who are hostile to you, your, or your anami, your enemies. So the hostile, the enemy Gauls, the, uh, the rival Gauls, pugnant, pugno, pugnare, pugnavi, pugnatus, third person plural present tense, it's happening right now, they are fighting. So the Galli inimici could either be genitive, singular, masculine showing possession, I'm pretty sure that it's actually going to be nominative plural masculine. So this is our subject. Against many people in Italy, the Galli inimici, the enemy Gauls, are fighting. The enemy Gauls are fighting against many people, many men in Italy. Said, but, this is a conjunction. Gallos, Gallos, uh, this is the accusative plural masculine direct object of this verb. So, but the Gauls, now something is happening to the Gauls. Here the Gauls are the subject, they're doing the fighting, but now something is about to happen to them. Apugnabimus. Mus, first person plural, we. Be, future of apugno, apugnare, apugnawi, apugnatus. Not just to pugno, pugnare, fight, but to ob pugnare, to fight against, to attack, to assault. So, we will attack the Gallos, the Gauls. The enemy Gauls are fighting against many people in Italy, but we will attack the Gauls. Optime, septima, sententia septima. Romani amicitiam cum Gallis confirmabunt. So the Romani from, uh, this is an, really an adjective, Romanus a um, meaning Roman, you can see the word Roman in there. And from, of course, that adjective, we can derive substantive nouns like Romanus e masculine, a Roman man, a Romana i feminine, a Roman woman. So this is the nominative plural masculine. We could just say Romans, the Romans, the, the Roman men, the people who are Roman. So the Romans, uh, either genitive singular, showing possession, it's probably going to be the nominative plural uh, masculine subject. So the Romans, amicitiam, from amicitia i feminine, it is the accusative, singular, feminine, direct object of the verb. It doesn't have a preposition in front of it, so it's the direct object of the verb. So the Romans are doing something to friendship. Cum, cum plus the ablative shows accompaniment, accompan accompaniment. So ablative, gallus a um, a gall, 
These are the galls, ablative, plural, masculine, ablative of accompaniment with the galls. Confirmabunt, confirmabunt. Look, there's con. Con is actually cum. It's just con has assimilated and changed a little bit when you tack it on to the beginning of a verb. So confirmo, confirmare, confirmavi, confirmatus with the third plural future ending added to it. Bo, bis, bit, bimus, bitis, bunt. They, meaning the Romans, our subject, the Romans will confirm friendship with the Gauls. The Romans will confirm friendship with the Gauls. Octava, sententia octava. Ante bellum, dona magna ad multos amicos nostros portabamus. So ante, ante is the opposite of post. So am, if you wake up in the am, that is the ante meridian, that is before noon. You could also wake up in the pm, post meridian, which is after noon, with meridian being the noon. This is ante bellum, so before the accusative war, bellum e neuter. Before the war, dona magna, dona, from donum e neuter, meaning gift. This is either going to be the nominative or accusative, plural neuter, either the subject or the direct object. Magna, from magnus a un, big, large, great, probably agrees with dona. It could be nominative singular feminine, it could be nominative or accusative plural neuter. Odd, odd takes the accusative case showing motion towards, so multos, this is accusative. Accusative plural masculine of multus a um, much plural many. So if it doesn't have an accompanying noun with it, I'm gonna go ahead and say to or towards the many, the many men, multos, and declare it a substantive. Uh, this is motion towards, we're going towards. Amicos, hey, there's a noun that goes with that. So amicos, from amicus e masculine, friend, accusative plural masculine, motion towards, towards many friends, too many friends. Nosros, nosros, they are also our friends. There's the adjective of quantity preceding the noun and then followed by the adjective of quality. They are also ours. Noster, nosra, nosrum. Nosros, accusative plural masculine agreeing with amigos, to our many friends. Portabamos, portabamos, mus, first person plural, imperfect of porto, portare, portavi, portatus, to carry. So, we were carrying, we used to carry, when? Ah, uh, that was before the war. Ah, uh, of course. What did you used to carry? Ah, uh, some accusative plural direct object. It can't be the nominative because we are the subject, and unless we are some big gifts, probably not. This is going to be the direct object. So, before the war, we used to carry great gifts. We used to bring great gifts. Ad multos amigos nostros, to our many friends. We could also say to many of our friends. Before the war, we were carrying great gifts to many of our friends, to our many friends. Nona, sententia nona. Post bellum, donum pulcrum vestro amico bono dabitis. Or dabitis. So, post bellum, post, opposite of ante. If ante is before, post is after in space or time. So, after the bellum e neuter war, post, like ante, they both take the accusative. Post bellum, after the war. Donum, donum e neuter, a gift, singular, could be nominative, the subject, could be accusative, direct object. Pulcrum, from pulcher, pulcra, pulcrum, beautiful, noble, fine, probably agrees, modifies the noun donum. Uh, it could be uh, accusative, singular, masculine, or it could be nominative or accusative, singular, neuter. Westro from Wester, Westra, Westrum, meaning your plural. Uh, this could either be dative or ablative singular. Amico, amico, so amicus e masculine, meaning friend, either dative or ablative singular. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and guess that these are not ablative words because there's no preposition around here that goes with the ablative. So I'm going to guess that these are actually dative. So probably indirect object to your friend, to your plural friend. Bono from bonus a o meaning good. Dative or ablative singular? Well, once again, it's probably not going to be the ablative. There's no preposition. So here, this adjective agrees with amico, as does this adjective modifies this noun amico. So uh, all of these are dative, indirect object, to your plural good friend. Dabitis, dabitis. So this is tis, second person plural, bi, future of do, dare, dedi, datis. After the war, ye will give a, a beautiful gift to your plural good friend. After the war, you will give a beautiful gift to your good friend. And decima, sententia decima. Errant multi provinciae et Europae et Asiae et Africae. So errant, errant, we have uh, sum occupying the initial position. So existential sum. Third person plural, imperfect. Eram, eras, erat, eramus, eratus, errant. They were. They used to be. Multi, from multus a um. So this could either be the genitive singular feminine, dative singular feminine, or nominative plural uh, feminine. Multi. Provinciae. Provinciae. So this is provincia i feminine. Provinces. A province. Either a genitive singular feminine, dative singular feminine, or nominative plural feminine. Uh, multi probably modifies provinciae. Uh, it is probably the nominative plural subject because we have our verb right there. We require a nominative subject, you know, accusatives in sight. So we need uh, many provinces were. There were many provinces. Then we have et, conjunction. Now this et correlates, it's a correlative conjunction. It correlates to this et and also to this et. In English, we would probably write this using an Oxford comma. So Europa, comma, Asia, comma, and Africa. Make sure you put the Oxford comma. It's important. Now we have et, Europa. Uh, this, this is going to be dative, as is Asia, as is Africa. These are datives of possession. Uh, Europa I feminine, Asia I feminine, and Africa I feminine. So there were many provinces to Europe and to Asia and to Africa. Or we could say Europe, Asia, comma, and Africa had many provinces. These are datives of possession with a form of to be to show that possession exists that these things own these things, but we're emphasizing these things, that at one point there were many provinces and they belonged to, or we could even say that many provinces belong to Europe. You can hear that to, that dative to Europe and to Asia and to Africa. Optime, very well done. That was exercise D, parsing Latin sentences and turning them into English. You are now ready to move on to exercise E, which is parsing English sentences and turning them into Latin. Valete omnes.